Last year, I spent about six months participating in what I was told to be a psychological experiment. I found an ad in my local paper looking for imaginative people to make some good money, and since it was the only ad that week I remotely qualified for, I gave them a call and arranged for an interview. They told me that all I would have to do was stay in a room, alone, with sensors attached to my head to read my brain activity. And while I was there to visualize a double image of myself, they called this a tulpa. It seemed easy enough, and I agreed to do it as soon as they told me how much I'd be being paid. And the next day, I began. They brought me up to a simple room and gave me a bed, then attached some sensors to my head and hooked me up to a little bat black box on the table beside me. They talked me through the process of visualing my double again and explained that if I got bored or restless, instead of moving around, I should visualize my double moving around, or try to interact with it, and so on and so on. The idea was to keep him with me the entire time I was in the room. I had trouble with it for the first few days. <laughs> it was more controlled than any sort of daydreaming I've ever done. I'd imagine my double for a few minutes and then I'd grow distracted. But by the fourth day, I could manage to keep him present for the six hours they told me to do it, and then they told me I was doing very, very well. The second week, they gave me a different room with wall-mounted speakers. They told me that they wanted to see if I could keep the topo with me despite having distracting stimuli. The music was discordant, ugly, and unsettling. It made the whole process a little more difficult, but I managed nonetheless. The next week, they played even more unsettling music. <laughs> punctuated with shrieks and feedback loops, what sounded like an old-school modem dialing up, with gradual guttural noises speaking from a foreign language. I just laughed it off. I was a pro by then. After about a month of this, I started to get bored to living things up. I started to interact with my doppelganger. We'd have conversations or play rock, paper, scissors, or I imagine him judging or break dancing or whatever I could caught my fancy. I asked the researchers if my foolishness would adversely affect their study, but they encouraged me to do it anyway. So we played and communicated and that was fun for a while. And then that's when it started to get a little strange. I was telling him about my first date one day, and he actually corrected me. I said my date was wearing a yellow top, and he told me that it was a green one. I thought about it for a second and then I realized he was right. It creeps me out, and after my shift that day, I talked to the researchers about it. You're using a thought form to access your subconscious, they explained. You know, on some level that you are wrong, and you subconsciously corrected yourself. What had been creepy was just now all of a sudden cool. I mean, like, I was talking to my subconscious. It took a little bit of practice, but I found out a way I could question my topa and access all sorts of memories. I could make it quote, whole books from a page of a book I read once, years before, or things that I was taught at an immediately forgotten high school. It was so damn awesome. That was about the time I started calling up my double outside of the research center. Not often at first, but I was so used to imaging them by now it seemed almost odd not to see them. So whenever I was bored, I'd visualize my double. Eventually, I started taking them out almost all the time. It was amusing him to take him as an invisible friend. I imagined him hanging out with my friends or visiting my mom. I even brought him along on a date once. I didn't need to speak aloud to him, so I was able to carry out conversations with him with no one being the wiser. I know that sounds strange, but it was fun. Not only was he a walking repository of everything I knew and everything I had forgotten, he also seemed to be more in touch with me at times. He did have an uncanny grasp on the minute-to-minute -minute body language that I didn't even pick up on. For example, I thought the date I brought along was going badly, but he pointed out that she was laughing a little too hard at my jokes and was leaning towards me as I spoke, and a bunch of other subtle clues that I was unconsciously picking up on. I listened, and let's say... That date went very well, and leave it at that. By the time I had been at the research center for months, he had been with me constantly, and the researchers approached me after my day shift. They asked me if I'd stopped visualing him, and I denied it, and they seemed to be pleased. I silently asked my double if he knew what prompted that, but he shrugged it off, so so did I. 
I withdrew a little from the world at that point. I was having trouble relating the people. I, it seemed to me that they were so confused and unsure of themselves while I had a manifestation of myself to consult with. It made socializing awkward. Nobody else seemed to be aware of the reasons behind their actions, why some people made them mad while other things made them laugh. They don't know what moved them, but I did. Or at least I could ask myself to get an answer. A friend confronted me one evening. He pounded on the door until I answered, and came in fumming and swearing up a storm. You haven't answered my calls when I called. I haven't fucking seen you in weeks, you fucking dick. He yelled. What's your fucking problem? I was about to apologize to him and probably would have offered to hit the bars of him that night, but my tulpa grew suddenly furious. Hit him, he said. But before I knew what I was doing or what I had done, I heard his voice and break and he fell to the floor and came up swinging back. We beat each other up and down my apartment. I was more furious than I ever had been, and I was not merciful. I knocked him to the ground and gave him two savage kicks to the ribs, and that was when he fled, hunched over sobbing. The police are by a few minutes later, but I told him he had been a, well, instigator, and since he wasn't around to refute me, they let me off of a warning. My tulpa was grinning the entire time. We spent the night prowling about my victory and sneering about how badly I'd beaten my friend. It wasn't until the next morning, when I was checking out my black eye and cut lip in the mirror, that I remembered what had set me off. My double, who'd grown furious, not me. I'd been feeling, I'd been feeling guilty and ashamed, but he gouted me uh, into a vicious fight with a concerned friend. He was present, of course, and he knew my thoughts. You don't need him anymore. You don't need anyone else, he told me, and I felt my skin crawl. I explained this to the researchers who employed me, but they just laughed it off. <laughs> you can't be scared of something you're imagining, one told me. My double stood behind him and nodded his head, but then smirked at me. I tried to take their words to heart, but over the next few days, I found myself growing more and more anxious around my topa, and it seemed that he was changing. He looked taller, more menacing, his eyes twinkled with mischief, and I saw malice with a constant smile. No job was, lur no job was just worth losing my mind over, and I decide he w if I decided he was out of control, I'd put him down. I was so used to him at that point that visualizing him was an automatic process, so I started trying to, well, I, I tried my damnedest not to visualize him. It took a few days, but it started to work somewhat, so I, you know, could get rid of him for a few hours at a time, but every time, he'd come back, and he seemed worse. His skin seemed to ashen, his teeth seemed more pointed, he hissed and gilbert and threatened and swore. The dis coordinate music I had been listening to for the several months seemed to accompany him everywhere. Even when I was at home, I'd relax and slip up, no longer concentrating on seeing, not seeing him, and there he'd be, howling the noise with him. I was still visiting the research center and spending my six hours there. I needed the money and I thought that they weren't aware about how actively I was not visualizing my topa. I was dead wrong. After my shift one day, about five and a half months in, Two well-dressed men grabbed me and restrained me, and someone in a lab coat dragged a hypothermic needle into me. I woke up in my stupor in the room, strapped to the bed, music blaring, with my doppelganger standing over me, crackling. He hardly looked like a human anymore. His features were twisted. His eyes were sunken in, their sockets with filmed over like a corpse. He was much taller than me, and... He was hunched over as well. His hands were twisted his, and his fingernails were like talons. He was short and fucking terrifying. I tried to will him away, but I couldn't seem to concentrate. He giggled and tapped the IV in my arm. I thrashed in my restraints as best as I could, but I could hardly move at all. <laughs> They're pumping some good shit. <laughs> I think, how, how's the mind all oh, fuzzy? He was leaning closer and closer as I spoke. I, I gagged at his breath. It smelled like spoiled meat. I tried to focus, but I couldn't banish him. 
The next few weeks were terrible. Every so often, some doctor in a lab coat would come in and inject me with something, or force feed me a pill. They kept me dizzy and unfocused, and sometimes left me hallucinating or delusional. My thought for him was still present, constantly mocking me. He interacted with, or perhaps caused, my delusions. I hallucinated that my mother was there, scolding me, and then cut her throat. Blood showered me. It was so real I could taste it. The doctors never spoke to me. I begged at times. I screamed. I hurled... I hurled obscenities, demanded answers. They never spoke to me, though. They have talked to my tulpa, however. I'm, they talked to my personal monster. I'm not sure how doped up or confused I was, or if it just had been a delusion, but I remember them talking with them. I grew convinced that he was the real one, and I was a thought for him. He encouraged that line of thought at times, and mocked me. And mocked and just encouraged My memory's starting to grow fuzzy. Just, uh. Another thing I pray was a delusion, is that he could touch me. More than that, he could hurt me. He'd poke and prod at me if he felt I wasn't paying enough attention to him. Once he grabbed my testicles and squeezed them until I told him I loved him. Another time he splashed my forearms with- well, slashed one of my forearms with his talons. I still have a scar. Most days, I can convince myself that I just injured myself, and just had to hallucinate that he was responsible. Most days. Then one day, he was telling me the story about how... How he was going to gut and hurt everyone I loved. Starting with my sister. He paused and gave a curriculous look across his face, and reached out and touched my head like my mother used to when I was feverish. He stayed still for a long moment and then smiled. All your thoughts are so creative, he told me, and then walked out the door. Three hours later, I was given an injection, and I passed out. I w awoke unrestrained, sh shaking. I made my way to the door, and I found it unlocked. I walked into the empty hallway and ran. I stumbled more than once, but I made it down the stairs and out to the lot of the building. There I collapsed. I was weeping. I was weeping like a child, and I knew I had to keep moving, but I couldn't manage, manage it. I got home eventually. I don't remember how. I locked the door and shoved a dresser against it and took a long shower. I slept for a day and a half. Nobody came for me in that night, and nobody came the next day or the day after that. It was over. I spent a week locked in that room, but I felt it felt like a century. I'd withdrawn so much that my life beforehand felt like nobody had even known I'd been missing. The police didn't find anything. The research center was entirely empty when they searched it. The paper trail fell apart, and the names I'd given were aliases. Even the money I received was apparently untraceable. I recovered as much as one can. I don't leave the house much, and I have panic attacks when I do. I cry a lot. I don't sleep much, and my nightmares are terrible. It's over, I tell myself. I survived. I use concentration on those bastards who taught me to convince myself. And it works sometimes. Not today, though. Three days ago, I got a phone call from my mother there, saying that there had been a tra tragedy. My sister was the latest villain, was the latest victim on a spree killing. The police say the perpetrator mugs his victims and then guts them. The funeral is this afternoon. It was a lovely service as a funeral can be. I suppose I was a little distracted though. All I could hear was music coming somewhere from distant. It, it was discordant, unsettling stuff that, that sounded like the feedback of shrieking and dialing up. I hear it still. A little louder now, and it, it, it gets louder and louder as the time goes by. If, if I'm not seen again, you know why.